Hi everybody, welcome to our lesson on the layers of the Earth. In this lesson, what we will talk about are the three compositional layers of the Earth called the crust, mantle, and the core. And then we'll discuss the five physical layers of the Earth, the lithosphere, asthenosphere, mesosphere, outer, and inner core. So let's get started. Here we have a cross section of the Earth, which means you've taken the Earth and you've cut it in half, and now we can see the inside of the Earth. And as we can see, there are different layers to our planet. Now, one way to remember how the layers are in proportion of size or in size to one another is to think of a peach that you've cut open in half. When you cut open a peach, you'll notice that there's a thin skin on the outside, which is the skin of the peach. That's like the crust of the earth. And then below the skin, you have the yellow meat part of the peach. That's more like the mantle. It's a lot thicker than the crust is. And then once you get through the meat of the peach, you get to the pit, which is more like the core found at the center of our earth. All right, so if we take a look at this picture here, you'll notice that there's a thin layer on the outside, and that's our crust, just like the skin of the peach. And then we have our mantle, which is like the meat of the peach, which is considerably thicker than the crust. And then once we get through the mantle, then we reach the core. Now, the reason why we have these three main layers is because of their composition and what they're made out of. Back when the Earth formed, the Earth had a very, very violent birth where there was a lot of impacts and heat generated and molten rock and lava all over the place. So since the planet was molten and there was a lot of liquid lava on the surface of the Earth, things were able to settle out, which means the lighter materials in the lava soup rose to the top because they were less dense. And then the heavier materials, as we know, tend to sink in liquids. So they were, since they were more dense, they went more towards the center. So when we take a look at our crust, our crust is going to be richer in silicone, which makes it less dense than the mantle, which is richer in magnesium and iron, which are metals. And then our outer core and inner core have the metals of nickel and iron in them. That's why they differ in their composition or the chemicals that they're made out of. However, these three compositional layers can be broken up into five physical layers. Now, when we take a look at this picture down here, we'll see that the Earth has been cut open again so we have a big wedge taken out of it and on the left here we have our three compositional layers and on the right here we have our five physical layers and we'll discuss the difference between them in a minute just for reference here's our crust the thin border on the outside our mantle and then our core that runs all the way down toward the middle however if you look at the right the three layers of our earth the compositional layers do not precisely match up with the physical layers. Now, the reason why these are called physical layers is because they differ in their strength or rigidity. Some layers are very strong and rigid, others are weak and putty-like, and then there's another layer that's just totally liquid. So as you travel through the earth, you're going to have different strengths within these layers, and that's why they're separated out. So our first layer that we have is the lithosphere, which is the crust in this gray layer up here, and then it's followed by the asthenosphere below it. And underneath the asthenosphere, we have the mesosphere. And then below the mesosphere, when we enter the core, we have a layer called the outer core, and then this bright yellow spot in the middle is the inner core. So why don't we talk about the differences between all of these layers. Now first, let's talk about and go over the chemical layers or compositional layers. The first layer we have is the crust, and the crust is the rocky, brittle outer layer of the Earth. So that's the shell of the Earth that we actually walk on. When we take a look at the crust, there are actually two types of crust you should know about. The two types of crust that we have are oceanic crust and continental crust. They're kind of easy to remember if you just know what their names mean. Oceanic crust is crust found underneath the ocean. So this is the ocean floor, and that's where oceanic crust is. It's this little thin layer right there. And then continental crust is a little bit different. If you take a look at continental crust, the word, you'll see the word continent in that. And if you know what a continent is, it's a huge land mass. So continental crust is the crust that makes up the land. So the locations differ in that oceanic crust is found on the ocean floor, where continental crust is found on land on the major land masses. Another difference between them is that Continental crust and oceanic crust have different densities because of what they're made out of. Oceanic crust has a higher density because there's more metal in that crust. And then as a result, our continental crust has a lower density because there's more silica in it. These are our two different types of crust that are on the Earth's surface. Now, once you get through the crust, you'll enter the second compositional layer called the mantle. 
and the mantle is just a solid layer of rock that sits below the crust and above the core. So it's the layer in the middle. And then when we get down through the mantle to the center of the earth, we get to the core, which is the very hot, dense center of the earth made of metal. So when we take a look at our diagram here, we have our crust at the top, this beige, brownish type layer at the top. This is all crust from here to here. And then the mantle starts from the top of the gray layer all the way down to the bottom of this reddish orange layer. So this entire section is the mantle. And then our core goes from the orange layer here all the way down to the bottom. It includes this yellow layer here. So those are the three compositional or chemical layers, what they're made out of. Now let's talk about the physical layers. Now, as I said before, the physical layers are divided based on their strength or rigidity or how inflexible it is. So our top layer is going to be the lithosphere. The lithosphere is a solid, rigid outer layer of the Earth, and it's made up of the crust and upper mantle. The prefix lithos means rock. So this is basically the rock sphere or the rock layer. So when we take a look, our lithosphere starts from the top of the crust, wherever it may be. This could be on the continental crust or it could be in the oceanic crust. So it includes the crust and goes through the crust and down into the mantle until it gets to the bottom of the upper solid part of the mantle. So our lithosphere actually includes the layer of crust and goes into the mantle. So don't forget that. Once you get through the, the lithosphere, you're going to get to a weaker layer called the asthenosphere. The asthenosphere is an elastic putty-like layer that the lithosphere floats on. Our asthenosphere is located here in this section. We'll talk more about the role the asthenosphere has on Earth as we get into tectonic plates and volcanoes and earthquakes. Once you get through this putty-like layer of the asthenosphere, you're going to reach the mesosphere. And the mesosphere is just nothing but solid, dense rock. All right? This is the rigid lower part of the mantle. And that's because the pressure of the rock above it has squeezed the rock tight. So that's why it's solid and rigid. Once you get through the bottom of the mantle, which ends at the bottom of the mesosphere, you then enter the core. And the first layer of the core that you hit is the outer layer of the core. So this is called the outer core. And the outer core is different because the outer core is hot liquid metal, mainly nickel and iron. You've gone from solid rock in the lithosphere to putty-like rock in the asthenosphere, and then solid rock again in the mesosphere. And once you hit the core, you hit a layer of liquid. And then as you travel through the outer core, you will then reach the center of the earth called the inner core. And the inner core is different from the outer core in that the inner core is a solid layer of nickel and iron, whereas the outer core is all liquid. And the reason why the inner core is solid is because when you take the pressure of all the rock above it and then the layer of molten metal above it, that pressure squeezes all those nickel and iron atoms together, creating a solid, dense ball of metal in the center of our planet. So again, our physical layers, we go from solid lithosphere to elastic putty-like asthenosphere to solid mesosphere to liquid outer core and then ending in solid inner core. So let's take a look and summarize how these layers stack up with one another and, and overlap with each other. All right, so on the left here, we have our compositional layers. So we're going to start off with the crust since it's at the top. It's the first layer, followed by the mantle, and then when we travel through the mantle, we get to the core. And our physical layers, this is where they tend to overlap in certain spots. Remember, we have our lithosphere that includes the crust and the top part of the mantle. And once you get through the lithosphere, you get to another layer of the mantle called the asthenosphere. And then once you travel through the asthenosphere, you get to the lower rigid part of the mantle here called the mesosphere. Once you finish traveling through the mantle, you enter the core, and then the first layer you will hit is the liquid outer core, and then once you travel through the liquid outer core, you'll reach the solid inner core. All right, well, that concludes our lesson on the layers of the Earth, compositional and physical. I hope you found that helpful. Thank you.